Hi, I'm uh, Daniel from Ionis Cloud. Uh, we provide infrastructure as a service to our customers. And we use a stack where we provide each customer VM on two different uh, storage machines. And then those um, uh, uh, volumes are exported over the, net the network to the hypervisor node, where they form a RAID 1. And this volume is then used by the uh, customer VM. So our sc we scale our clusters by adding new pairs of storages to our, to, our, um, to our storage cluster. And then the new volumes are provided on those two new machines. And also some old volumes have to be migrated in order to uh, balance the load in the cluster. Of course, each pair of storages is used by multiple clients. And uh, what we want to do is go toward uh, some distributed block store. So which, what we want is that each uh, customer volume is stored on each machine in the cluster in order to uh, reach the highest throughput possible. If you, do, if you, if you go in, in this um, uh, kind of domain, then uh, the client needs to take the decision for each uh, data chunk to which pair of storages and to which pair of disk to write its data to. So if you do that, in the end, you, you, you have you have uh, two separate problems. One problem is that if uh, each volume is spread across of all the machines, then you have the highest read-write throughput possible. But uh, if anything breaks in the cluster, then possibly all customer volumes are affected. And the other problem, which is in fact only related to the first one, is that if each disk shares a portion of its data with any other disk in, in the cluster, then you have the highest resynchronization throughput possible. But uh, you have a higher probability that another disk fails during the recovery. So there is a, a PG in direction layer addresses exactly that problem, and it's, uh, uh, it's introduced in those famous uh, Ceph-related papers. I want to illustrate it on, on a small example cluster consisting of just three machines, each having two disks, and um, the replication policy being the rule w would be to put each block of data on two different disks on two different machines. So now there is a question arising, like how to organize the disks into pairs. The simplest uh, would be to just group each two disks in, into a pair, and then the client can write into such a pair. This is what is called a fully clustered setting. So basically, in order to recover one single disk, if it is, would be failed, to recover the data, I need to write from only one disk in the cluster. So of course, one would like to be faster, so and maybe want to for each disk to participate in two different groups, and maybe even more faster, and it could participate in three different placement groups. And then, Finally, it could participate with four other disks, which is the fully disk clustering setting for this particular cluster. So here, when I um, uh, need to recover disk A, then I, would, I can read in parallel from, from dif different disks. But then, uh, again, uh, this particular example presents a trade-off, a special trade-off um, which, which is introduced by the number of placement groups. So on the one hand, you have the highest recovery speed. On the other hand, you have the higher probability that some other uh, disk fails during you recover a given one. So if you look uh, into this in example cluster, you, you would see that we have six disks. So if you, uh, there are exactly 15 possibilities to select two disks, two random disks out of six. But uh, in that, uh, with three, we, we only use three placement groups. So, so that's obviously like if two disks, random disks fails, then we lose customer data with probability of 20% that particular cluster. And if we had six groups, then it would be 40%. And if we had nine groups, it would be 60%. And 12 groups, the full declustering setting, it would be at 80%. And of course, in general, you can, it looks like that, which is pretty obvious, so I'm not going to spend more time on this one. And um, what my point being is that the PG indirection layer is a very general concept. Uh, so it, on the one hand, it provides a level of control uh, of kind of data distribution, so on how many 
physical devices, a volume, uh, a final volume is distributed. On the other hand, it provides the level of control of, of the declustering. So how fast I can recover one failed device. So with how many other machines or drives a given drive is sharing its data with. And it's a general, very general framework for uh, implementing a replication policy or cluster scaling. And as an example, uh, here is an example. On the left side, you can uh, see a very familiar to you picture of a kind of RBD setup. I have RBD images on top. It's, they sit on top of Radus objects. They are mapped uh, via some hashing to placement groups, and those placement groups are stored on, on OSDs. On the right hand side, you see a, a stack built uh, with using just DM thin and uh, each customer volume is each volume uh, thin provisioned volume is exported with some network protocol like SRP, IBMVD, or NVMe over fabrics to the client. They are built into rate arrays um, on the client side, and then finally you can put a rate zero on top, and you can manage this kind of configuration um, using same approach as Crash is doing. So, in theory, you could use a, uh, you could use a um, uh, self monitors and get the configuration for for this kind of stack and but the main challenges if doing so uh, are those and now i'm done <laughs> thanks <laughs>